Getting new people into the trade is a struggle I think we're all facing right now. But once you get them into your shop, how do you help motivate them towards excellence rather to than towards mediocrity? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be heading back into the Practical Machinist forums to answer a poster who came on with exactly this question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today on Shop Talk, as promised, we are going to be discussing something that a lot of us tend to ponder um, as shop owners and managers. This is something that probably hundreds of books over the years have been written about you know people give lectures on this topic so i'm going to say right out from the beginning i'm probably not going to say anything new or groundbreaking but i'm going to try to amalgamate some of my own experiences and best practices along with some of the information that people gave on the forum in response to this question to try to give you some strategies to deal with this so as promised we are heading back into the Practical Machinist forums. This was a post that was put on the shop management and ownership subform. Um, a poster came on and had said that they work at a company that sounds like a medium sized company. So we're not talking thousands of staff. We're also not talking five staff. Sounded like, you know, between a dozen and maybe a few dozen people working at this company. And they did say right out from the outset that they are not a shop owner, they're not a shop manager, but there seems to be a situation happening at their shop right now that they work at, and they're hoping to get a bit of feedback on it. I guess the way they described it was that there, at the moment, tends to be a bit of a accountability problem at their shop. And essentially the situation as it was told was that people at this shop are not taking pride in their work. Um, he described a situation there where I guess there's a machinist who's a little bit more senior than they are and they had a run of eight parts or something to do. You know, it sounds like a short run job. And out of those eight parts, six were scrapped and not fixable. And apparently there was some accountability issues with that you know they're blaming this someone else is blaming that um, essentially people are not taking pride in their work so he came on to the forum and was asking you know people who are in the scenario where you manage people or you've worked at a shop for a long time what are some strategies and things that people do in this kind of situation to help motivate people to take pride in their work have accountability for their work and produce you know put those two things together to produce good parts. The answers he got here were pretty insightful. Uh, there was a lot of really, really good information in this thread. We always link them below. Uh, so feel free to go and check it out. It's a bit of an older thread, but those ones are kind of nice because then you get a lot of information because people have had a lot of time to respond to them. Um, some of the things I definitely emphasize in my own shop as well that people said there, so we'll touch on them as well. First and foremost, right from the outset, the person who posted this had the same thought. You know, they said, I feel like this is a money issue, but maybe not. Right, first and foremost, we're just gonna get it out of the way. Money and benefits is the first topic you need to make sure you're looking at if you're experiencing this situation. Think of it this way. If you as a shop owner or manager want to go get some parts made outside of your company. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you need some work done on a Swiss machine and you don't have a Swiss machine. Uh, maybe it's overflow work, whatever it is. If you're going to get that job quoted out and you get five prices and this is some high level work, it has some tight tolerances or maybe you know you just know this drawing has some features on it that you need to make sure people are noticing. If you get five quotes, you're probably not gonna trust the bargain basement pricing guy with a part that needs quality up here. It just doesn't make sense. You know, it's a pretty accepted thing. You know, it's not revolutionary to say that if you pay trash, you're gonna expect to get trash out. You know, if you're paying nothing for something, you can't really expect much. It's funny how often this kind of accepted thought process that we all kind of work for from when we're dealing with outside vendors 
can fall away when it comes to our own shops. Um, you know, it, it seems like it's there's a disconnect there. At the end of the day, if you're not paying proper wages, you don't have proper benefits, you're not competitive, you are not going to attract the high level talent that you need to begin with. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you do Pizza Friday. It doesn't matter if you guys are doing parts that go to the moon. If you are not paying properly, you're not offering those wages that people need in order to be attracted to that job, right from the outset, you are not going to be attracting the right kind of talent for your shop. Uh, you know, if you're scraping the bottom of the barrel for talent, you really can't be surprised when you get bottom of the barrel parts that are getting thrown out to scrap when they hit your QC. It's, you know, I don't want to say there's good people and bad people, but there's definitely talent levels, there's commitment levels, there's uh, inherent work ethic. Those people, if they have better opportunities out there than your shop because of, you know, money and hours and all that, they're going to go somewhere else. So you're not even going to get the right people on your floor to begin with. And that's really, really important. Um, no matter what else I say in this, if you are not properly compensating your staff, everything else is pretty much a non-starter. It doesn't matter what else you do. If someone is not motivated because you're not paying them properly, they're not gonna be there. I know I just spent a lot of time saying this, but it's really, really important, and I need to make sure you hear it. There is no shortcut for paying a proper competitive living wage. That said, as other people said in the forum there, and I will definitely agree with this, just adding more pay to a poor performing staff member is also not the shortcut to get better work out of them. I've seen it happen, I've seen it happen in other shops, I've been told this, other people had that experience. If you have someone that is uh, performing poorly and the only thing you do is throw more money at them, you might see a bump for a minute and then it will probably go back to baseline because there is still an underlying problem besides money that you are not addressing. So let's get that out of the way and say with all the info other information we're gonna talk about today, you are paying competitive wages, you have proper work hours, you're not riding your guys into the dirt because you know you are working them 80 hours a week. Let's say that's all off the table. So what are some strategies then that a manager or a supervisor or a manager owner could use to help motivate their staff to have accountability and produce good parts? First off, to kind of touch on the question this guy asked, if you are facing an accountability problem, the solution might sound counterintuitive, is to give more accountability to your staff. If you're in a scenario where people are not taking responsibility, you know, something goes wrong and, oh, it's not my fault, the machine had a glitch. Oh, it's not my, uh, Dan over in, in welding, he messed it up and I did the best I could, but you know, the person, we all know these kind of people, we all know these kind of scenarios. Maybe the people aren't like this, maybe they just act like this sometimes, whatever it is. If you're facing an accountability problem, the solution, one solution, is to give them more accountability. It's a bit baffling how many times you see shop owners and managers come to the Practical Machinist forums or LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever it is, and they're just enraged. I've seen this dozens of times, where they come on and they say, what is with staff today? Nobody cares, nobody, you know, everybody is garbage, nobody takes responsibility anymore, I don't know what to do. And then you let them talk a little more and they say, you know, you say, well, what's going on? And they say, well, you know, I don't understand. I do the programming, I give them the setup sheets, I troubleshoot it for them, I, I, I. Well, there's your problem, it's all you. You're doing everything. Why would anybody take responsibility in that scenario? You don't, if you're in that scenario where it's I, 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 and you don't understand why people can't do what you're saying, you're not looking for staff. You're looking for a robot. And frankly, if that's what you're looking for, you should be looking at automation. It's a great solution. You shouldn't be dealing with staff. Um, you know, if that's the scenario you find yourself in and that's the scenario you want to be in, automate it. That's it. If you never give people the chance to try, fail, adapt, learn, they're never gonna do any of those things. They're gonna feel no connection to their work. They're not gonna try in the first place. It doesn't mean that you need to let an apprentice go crash your expensive five axis, or you know, if, uh, if a new guy is running a job and we're drilling 304 stainless, and you start to hear that drill whine, you know it needs sharpening, 
That doesn't mean you let him scrap parts until he figures it out. That's not what we're saying. That's counterproductive. In a scenario where, let's say, you know, you're drilling 304, you hear the drill start whining, that drill's getting dull. Instead of just going and doing it, that's when you need to give them the responsibility to do it. Say, hey, listen, hear that right there? That drill's getting ready to burn out. You've been doing this for 10, 20 years. You know what the scenario is. When you hear it do that, let's take the drill over. Let's switch it so we can get up and running right away. Hopefully you have another one right there. Let's go sharpen it. And then that becomes their job. Are they gonna do it right the first time? Probably not. Is it gonna take them a few chances to get that right and get developed on that? Yeah, but pretty soon you're gonna have an operator that knows how to sharpen a drill. Repeat that over and over and over with different things. All of a sudden you have an operator who knows how to touch off tools, who knows how to program. All of a sudden you have, you know, if you're not halfway to a decent machinist, you have a very competent operator who now knows that they should be watching for certain things. They know that if, you know, something's going weird to the machine, they know how to go troubleshoot it or they know how to go fill the, uh, the lube oil. You need to keep building on that and give them more responsibilities for them to feel responsible for it. If they've never been responsible for monitoring the chip bin and every time you come in and the chip bin's full and you yell, what does that do? You need to tell them, this is your responsibility. Now let's get you going on it. Guys, people want responsibility. People want responsibility. It gives them something to do. Do you think people want to stand there all day in front of a machine like this? No. Give them things to look out for and you're going to find that people take that responsibility and run with it. If they don't and they just plain don't want responsibility, that's another conversation. But you need to make sure you're doing that first. Micromanaging is something that especially I find in this trade can be prevalent because there is such a learning curve. You know, you want to tell the the guy who's a two-year apprentice or three-year apprentice, you want to tell him how to program this and tell him exactly how you're going to do it and the tool you want used for it and whatever. That's fine. But if you're telling him everything to do and you're micromanaging it, he feels no responsibility to do it himself. And that will kill motivation, kill initiative, and all of a sudden you're going to have a guy who doesn't want to do anything or take responsibility. The next good idea I saw in there was the concept of a feedback loop. I didn't call it this in my shop, but in reading what this guy was describing when he's talking about a feedback loop, this is something we actually do a lot here and I feel it's very, very important. And to kind of frame it, how many times have you worked at a job, you know, machining or otherwise, and aside from maybe, a, a, you know, a 20 minute yearly review, the only conversations you have with your supervisors or boss are when things go wrong. I feel like I've been in that scenario. I feel like a lot of people have been in that scenario. And I feel like a lot of people, myself included over the years, have been that person on the other side who only gives feedback when the building's on fire. You need to make sure that you are giving feedback. I call it the three O's. You need to give feedback often. You need to give it openly and on as much as you can. Taking the time after a production run, for instance, to sit down with your guys who are involved in it. And that means everybody involved in it, not just the supervisor, not just the floor manager, sitting down with everybody who was involved with that run. Doesn't need to be a two hour conversation. It can be five minutes, but busting out the paperwork, the hours put into that job, um, you know, the stats, because you should have stats on how your jobs are running, busting those out in front of your guys and saying, hey, listen, this is how long this took. This is what worked. This is what didn't. It is absolutely essential because then not only does it give you a chance to give feedback to your staff, but it gives your staff or your peers an opportunity to get feedback to you. That guy running that job that maybe ran for two weeks may have been frustrated that entire time because the fixture is not working properly. Maybe he said something uh, to somebody and it didn't get handled. You know how these things tend to go. And he is at the end of his rope because he tried to run this job, he did the best he could, but the fixture is getting clapped. Well, now it gives him an opportunity to everybody there say, the job went okay, but you know what? We had a pro problem with parts kicking in the third operation because the fixture is no good. Great, now we can fix it next time. Not only does it get fixed, but it acknowledges that person's experience and it makes them feel responsible for the next time it happens. And it goes a long way to smooth over the frustration that they had running that job. You need to make people feel, not only do you need to make people feel heard, you need to hear people. Whether you think, think that feedback is 
high level or low level, you need to hear that information to get the full picture on the job and know what was happening. And if people feel heard, they're going to be more liable to take responsibility and pride in their work. Also on top of that, even if a job goes perfectly, you set it up, it runs great, everything is good, you still need to at least acknowledge to the people involved in that job that everything went really well. People need to feel as responsible for their good outcomes as they do for their bad outcomes. Otherwise, they're not gonna take responsibility at all. If they're only responsible when things go bad, but you don't say anything when things go good, what's the incentive for them to care? You need to make sure you were doing that every single day. The last part of this that I thought was uh, good and interesting, we do it and I try to do more of it. It is something I'm trying to work on even more, you know, as we kind of do some more production jobs. And that is goal setting and tracking. If you, and I know some of you guys who watch these videos are operators, some of you guys may not have done operation work, you know, where you sit there and you run a machine for days on end, for years. And you need to remember that if you are an operator, sometimes, you know, the guy, the green put, button pusher, let's call it, the guy reloads the machine, sometimes that job can feel like Groundhog Day. If your job is to walk in and run the same 20 minute cycle on a thousand parts, and you're there for six weeks, you're gonna be bored, you're gonna wonder what you're doing, uh, you know, they, I, I don't even know how to describe that level of day in, day out. And it's work and people are good at it, but it is a difficult, difficult thing to do. And I know when people hear, why is one guy running a job for weeks just loading and unloading? You should automate that job. Yes, you should. But at the end of the day, these situations do still exist. But if that staff member comes in and runs that job for eight weeks, same job, full time, and you come up and you talk to him at the end and you walk away from that conversation going, man, that guy doesn't seem to have any motivation. It's because he's been running the same job for eight weeks. You need to encourage from not only your high level staff, right down to your less experienced staff, things like goal setting and tracking. You know, that guy who's running the machine for eight weeks, I might walk up, give him a, a CNC booklet with G codes and say, hey, listen, I know you got some cycle time, Often we try to get them to do something else while they're running a cycle, but let's say there isn't anything, the shop's clean. I'll give them a GCO book and say, I want you to spend the next day writing these out and making notes on all these different G codes for the machine you're running. Then we're gonna drill it back so that by the time this cycle's done, not only do you have an understanding of G code, but now you can start looking and making suggestions saying, hey, listen, that, uh, that one G code there, the down feed seems to be a little slow. You know, this guy's been watching the machine for eight weeks. He's gonna know what the machine's doing. And say, actually, if we increase that one feed and so on and so forth, it gives them some responsibility and accountability and gives them more opportunities to do that because they're learning. Or, you know, I might say, listen, we have all these tool holders in the shop. I know you got cycle time. You're gonna be running this job for two weeks. I want you to learn how to load and unload every single tool holder we have in the shop, whether that's a taper, whether that is a collet chuck, whether that is a hydraulic holder, whether that is a solid holder. I want you to know by the end of this run, and we're gonna do this, we're gonna teach you how to do it, how to load and unload every single tool holder in the shop. So then again, they're learning their skills, they're building it, and they take some more responsibility. Hey, listen, you know what? I think we can switch that collet holder out to a solid holder, so on and so forth. Really, really important that you were keeping track of goal setting, not only for your high level guys, but also for the guys on the floor, because those guys, hopefully, if you're doing your job correctly and training people, are going to be the next generation of high level guys. So it's important to get that in there early. In any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below some strategies you guys either use that you find work really well for helping to motivate your guys to take accountability and make good parts, or maybe some strategies you've seen or tried that do not work. I would love to know those in the comments below. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.